Hi, my name is Alex Hero, and today I'm going to be going over the fad diet called the ketogenic diet. The ketogenic diet um, recently became popular just in the last, I would say, five or ten years. Um, but originally, it was developed in the 1920s um, and used to treat epilepsy in young children where their medication wasn't um, working for their, you know, anti-seizure medications weren't working. They didn't really know in the beginning, um, you know, the scientific reasoning behind why the uh, diet reduced the amount of seizures that the children were having, but it comes to find out um, due to recent research, they um, found that the diet alters genes involved in energy metabolism in the brain, um, which helps stabilize the neurons, um, the functioning neurons that are exposed to like helping with um, the seizures. Very confusing, um, but it, it's later on um, now, after the study by um, Dr. Capello in 2012, switched to a um, weight loss plan. He did a study where he um, fed, he was a surgeon to begin with, or a professor of uh, surgery, and he was feeding um, liquid diets high in fat to his patients through um, an NG tube. And he saw that the average weight loss was about 20 pounds and that, you know, they lost it pretty quickly and they were able to keep it off for a year. So that uh, study helped start, you know, the revolution of the weight loss plan for um, people and the, the coming out of the keto diet to the average public. So the keto diet is a low carb, high fat diet. A lot of people know um, low carb diet, uh, Atkins diet. It has a similar period in the beginning where you're, you're doing almost no carbs. So you're putting your body into a state of um, ketosis, which I'll go into more detail in a second. Um, so the breakdown of this diet is that Fats are up to 75% of your daily food intake, so a high amount of fat, moderate amount of protein, 20 to 30% of prote protein of your is your daily intake, and then um, very low carb intake, only 5 to 10%. So um, this diet has uh, very low amounts of fruit, um, obviously high amounts of protein and um, high fat meats and um, oils are, are up there um, higher in the diet and then some vegetables um, going down and seeds and nuts. So, you know, you're, no carbs, no sugar, um, no, no dairy, that's all off. So um, I said I was going to go into more detail about ketosis. So the diet, the premise of the diet is that your body is designed to more, to run more efficiently as a fat burner than a sugar burner. So usually the cells in your body would use carbohydrates or glucose as your main source of energy or their main source of energy. So when you starve your body of carbohydrates, um, your body goes into ketosis. And in ketosis, your liver, the if there's no um, glucose available, then um, the fatty acids are released from the fat cells stored in your body they go to your liver and ketones are created. And then that is what your body uses as fuel instead of um, the glucose. So some pros and cons of the keto diet. So I think a lot of people would be happy to hear that, you know, they can eat a lot of their high um, fatty foods that they normally enjoy eating, um, such as cheese and um you know butter and all these like really satiating foods uh fatty meats processed meats is even something that's on there um and 
you, generally with these high fat foods, you're you're not going to feel hungry. You're going to be very satiated. So that is probably the top um, pro to this diet. Um, it can help lead to low blood sugar, lower blood sugar, and um, it also stabilizes insulin levels and increases your ketones. Obviously, that's the point of the diet. Um, we have improved good cholesterol levels and um, uh, reduced bad cholesterol levels. And then one thing that I thought was kind of funny in the research that I did was that it kept saying, you know, oh, calorie counting is not necessary, not necessary. But then instead of counting calories, you know, you're moving on over to your cons and you're counting um, macros instead. It's just trading one thing for another. So cons, um, low blood sugar and improved insulin sensitivity. I mean, this could also be seen as um a, a con, sorry, the low blood sugar part, not the improved insulin sensitivity. That would be more of a pro, but definitely um, you do have periods where your blood sugar can drop a little too low. Um, the diet in general has a lot of um, limiting food sources, especially, you know, for American diets where we're so used to um, eating a lot of carbs. And again, you're taking out fruit. So that's not um, a good thing for a lot of people. This can cause um, constipation issues, which is one of the biggest problems we see in this diet. You know, um, not getting enough fiber can cause constipation um, in people that are doing this diet. And then, it's not a hundred percent necessary because there's several ways that you can tell your body or your body alerts to you that you are in ketosis. Um, but a lot of doctors would recommend that you, you know, are measuring your ketones using your, uh, sorry, urine, um, strips or urinalysis strips. And that's just sounds like a pain in the butt to begin with, um, not to mention you, that you probably should see your diet, your doctor before you start this diet, because this is really a large change um, in your metabolism. You know, not everybody is ready for that. This diet can also be really highly individualized um, from person to person. So it just might work well for some and not work well for others. Um, I think it's just really depends on um, the person. Um, we also have seen in um, some of the studies that people were having low energy levels. And I think a big um, con here, and, and one reason why the diet is not super sustainable is that there are some nutritional deficiencies associated um, with this diet. So I think that this diet, um, it's great. It sounds like it's great if somebody was overweight and they wanted to accelerate their weight loss. Um, but it, it sounds like it would be hard for something to stick to in the long run because, you know, the food choices are limited. Um, you know, a high fat diet probably isn't the best diet in the long run. It, I think that what the research is saying is that it's great to start out. It can really, you know, jumpstart your metabolism. But then if you were to compare it to a low fat diet, low fat are more sustainable over time because it's something that you can, um, that you can really stick to. It's easy. There's lots of um, food choices available you're not having as many side effects either. Um, so I think that this there's going to need to be more research on this diet because it hasn't been around um, long enough for them to really study the long-term effects. But in general, I think that um, it just doesn't sound like the way to go. Sounds definitely more like a fat or a yo-yo diet and that just – Eating healthy in general, um, low fat, um, moderating portion size, and some other things will be best.